Bro.io is a great static site generator for building content-focused, multilingual sites. Today, we're going to dive right in and get started from a template, learn how content works in Grow.io, and then deploy it simply with Netlify. Grow.io is built with Python 2, so we're going to create a virtual environment to install that. Then let's activate the virtual environment. Once we've activated the virtual environment, we can see it in our shell prompt. It's on the left. Then we're going to use pip to install grow. Let's just pip install grow. So let's just clear the terminal here. It's really simple to start. Just type grow int. We're going to use the base template. So that's just base, grow int base and then whatever we want to call the site. I'm going to call the site my site. Great. So Grow will download the base template from Grow Themes and then it puts it in the my site folder. So let's change into my site. Let's start up the Grow development server, which is as simple as typing Grow Run. Then go to your browser. In a new tab, open localhost, port 8080. Go there and you'll see you've got your Grow template all done, ready to start. So now that we've got our Grow template downloaded, let's go and look at how the site is laid out and how Grow works. So go to your text editor, double click on the folder to enter your site. The core file for Grow is the pod spec file. Each Grow site is called a pod in Grow Lingo. The pod spec defines metadata for each site, so it could be the title of the site. The base template for Grow also includes lots of other metadata options, such as your Google Analytics ID, Google Site Verification, a fab icon path, or a spot to put your Twitter or Facebook username, which will be automatically inserted into the footer. Grow also has a static file system built in. That's what the static DIRs is configuring here. We can see that static files are automatically fingerprinted by Grow. Additionally, the template includes preprocessors. Grow has a library of preprocessors, which is documented on its website, grow.io. By default, it includes SAS, which makes writing CSS a little bit easier. So that's the default configuration. We've got our metadata, we've got our static file configuration, and then we've got our SAS configuration. Great, so we've got our pod set up, but how does Grow know what content to actually render into our site? Grow has the, the idea of using views and content. This separates the content from the layout. In the default site, you only have one view, that's base.html, which includes a footer and header. The underscore symbolizes that it's an include, not a full view. Then you have the content. Let's look at how the base works before we can look at the content, so we can understand how the content goes into our base template. In the base template, it's got a very large header section. Most of this is filled in from the podspec.yaml file, which we just looked at. But it's also got the body section, and that's the meat that we want to look at here. The first bit is pretty self-explanatory, it just includes the header. At the end, it's got its pair. But how does the main section of the content work? Well, it supports two ways. The else condition is very simple. It just takes the HTML of the content and puts it on the web page. This is what's used if you're using Markdown, where the HTML would be generated by Grow and then fed into this template. But as you can see, it also supports this partials um, metaphor. The partials metaphor is used by the home page. So let's look at what the home page does for the partials metaphor. We can see the home page in the content subdirectory under pages and it is called home.yaml. So the partial system is really simple. The web page specifies a list of partials. Here it specifies that it uses the heroes partial which corresponds to the HTML file specified in the views folder. It then has a bunch of options which are passed to the partial. If you look at the hero.html file you can see that it puts these options inside a div. This is pretty simple and a really extendable way to add complex content to your grow site. 
So now we've got a brief understanding of how this grow template works. Let's edit something. If we go to content, pages, then about.md, we can see the about us page. If we go back to our browser and go to the about page, we can see that it's just using markdown. Just to test that everything's working properly, let's add some more content. Save the file and then reload the page in your browser. You can see that the content is updated quickly. This is the underlying concept of Grow, separating the content from the layout. Let's go back to that partials idea again. Open up the home file in the pages directory of the contents folder. Here we see that it's the contents of the home page. The great thing about partials is that you can have multiple partials. Let's add another partial here using the same hero template. Save the page and then reload it in your browser. As we can see, we can have multiple partials on one page. It's very simple with Grow. Great! Now that we've got the partials working and understand how to basically edit the site, let's look at how we can deploy this easily with Netlify. Before our site is ready to be built by Netlify, we need to give it all of the requirements. So, we can use pip freeze. If you do pip freeze into your terminal, you see that it prints out all of the requirements that are installed. Just save that into a file by using pip freeze, then a greater than sign, and then requirements.txt. One of the good features in Netlify is continuous deployment. In order to use that, we need to have a Git repository. You can use GitHub, Bitbucket, or I'm using GitLab. Let's go here. Create a new project. Then just copy the URL and go back to the terminal. Stop the Grow server, and now we can start to set up the Git repository. Just run git int, git add dot and that will automatically add all the files. Commit that. Then add the new origin. Git remote add origin and paste the URL. Just push it and you're ready to set up Netlify. In order to set up Netlify, go back to your browser and go to app.netlify.com. Click create a new site and choose your Git provider. I'm using GitLab. You have to authorize them for an access token and choose your repository. For the directory, choose build. And for the build command, grow build. Now just build your site. Bring your site. You can see the log of Grow's output in your browser. It might take a while. Click Builds to go back to the Builds tab, and by the time you do that, it should already be live. Click Publish. Now, if you click the main URL up the top, your site is live and ready for visitors.